What's going on guys, welcome back. And in this video, I'm gonna to be touching upon Micron, Nvidia, Intel, and a couple of other companies that you guys know that I've been investing in and that have had you know kind of remarkable rebounds over the past couple of months. I want to first and foremost apologize for the lack of video content that I've been putting out. You know, it's been almost a month or so since I've put out my last video. And I kind of wanted to address that quickly and then I'll get into the video uh, in just a bit. But the main reason why I have been so sluggish on, you know, putting out content here on YouTube is largely due to the fact of the situation I'm in. You know, I am a college student and I have been, you know, focusing around exams, between exams, working, uh, you know, start doing a startup company here at the university. I have been working, you know, essentially 60 to 80 hours a week. And, you know, all those things kind of take more precedence over uh, me putting out videos here on YouTube. And I do apologize for that because that is wrong. You know, I should be putting the subscribers here in this channel at a, you know, a higher list on the totem pole. But, you know, just realistically where it is when I have all these different avenues opening up, you know, whether it be, you know, I just got another job at a investment bank, whether it be my, you know, my group and my responsibilities for them when we were doing our startup currently and we're really focused on, you know, kind of generating a venture capitalist funding currently. Uh, there's just a lot of things going on on my plate and there's a lot of issues going on, you know, with family wise and people getting sick. Uh, you know, there's just... I just don't have as much time for YouTube as I expected I was going to have at the beginning of this semester. And I just wanted to really apologize for that. I do plan on still continuing to put out content here on this YouTube channel as long as I can. Uh, whenever I start that job in the investment bank, obviously the degree of financial topics that I can talk about are gonna become limited again. Uh, you know, this is a different one than the last time I was, so who knows what, it's, what their regulations are gonna be with saying what I can and can't disclose about my personal finances and, you know, my personal ideas on companies. But I do really wanna kinda of talk about uh, you know, before any of those sanctions get put on me, I do really want to talk about the things that I've been learning about this semester and really how it's been shifting my viewpoint and my approach to looking at investments. Uh, my professor that holds both his CFA and his PhD in finance has kind of blown my mind as to the way that you look at a company and how you analyze the companies, uh, you know, through their financial statements and also what the direction the company is going in. It shocks me to see that everything that was so confusing to me as, for example, uh, companies like Netflix, uh, Amazon, and Salesforce, you know, these companies that have these gross overvaluations by the standard metrics of looking at them, it all makes sense now. And th that is a topic for another day, but I just kind of wanted to say that I am, you know, I've also been kind of putting off videos because I have started to realize how much of the financial world that I just simply don't know and how much of, you know, not not exactly bad, but not necessarily good advice has been put out here on YouTube across all of the financial education channels that I've really been seeing. You know, a lot of people are focusing on uh, what my professor calls the old accounting methods, you know, the gap accounting methods and, you know, how people have historically valued stocks based off of it and how people have, you know, really kind of interpreted what companies are saying. And he kind of showed me that, you know, different accounting loopholes and things like that kind of distort what the traditional method of valuing companies has become. And that's why you see companies like Amazon, Salesforce, Netflix, these companies that, you know, have horrible free cash flows are decimating others in terms of stock returns and it, it really blew my mind and that's just something that you know I've really been trying to acquire as much of that knowledge as possible before I continue to put out more and more content especially when I start to look at those kind of companies and give my opinion on them because the way that he kind of told us to assess a financial statement how we need to take in you know not only looking at okay what does the bottom number mean but also like you know what's going on and how the money is you know flowing around the company in the different uh, segments of their balance sheets and financial statements it it completely blew me away and i really you know it's kind of me looking at this is that this channel was focused around you know bringing uh, some education and some light into the financial space and then my mind was just recently blown open with the amount of stuff that i haven't even realized has been happening in the financial markets uh, so that is a pretty long-winded uh you know excuse i guess for me not putting out a lot of content here on youtube and I kind of wanted to address it and I will be addressing, you know, with more in-depth videos about the things that I have learned and also the things that I'm experiencing with, you know, say starting my startup and other things like that and possibly going for my CFA over the next couple of months. But uh, that's not really why you guys are here. You guys are here, you know, to get my, you know, opinion on companies that I've been following here closely that you guys are also following or either following or invested in. 
So I'll shut up right now and get into this, you guys. If you have any other questions to ask me about that type of stuff, you know, throw it down in the comment section down below. And I know that this video is going to be pretty much a ramble. I'm still getting back in the swing of things. But without further ado, let's talk about companies that have had amazing performances since I started, you know, investing in them just a couple of months ago. And there are some companies that are already up over 50%, that one being Micron. And a lot of you guys have been asking in my older videos, since I have not been putting out videos uh, recently, uh, you know, what is my opinion on all these moves? And, you know, what is my overall opinion, uh, you know, in the direction of the overall economy? So in a very anecdotal way, I'm going to be talking about that. Micron, you know, start things off. Micron, when I talked about investing in it again back in December, I talked about how it hit book value. I felt that, you know, the amount of negativity that was around this space was, uh, you know, a bit exuberant. And I don't think that people were really looking forward, you know, past one or two quarters. And a lot of people, you know, were saying that Micron is now just going to go back to, you know, losing boatloads of money. And that just hasn't been the case. The, the way that Micron has been strategically positioning itself, in addition to cutting its uh, capital expenditure for the next quarter or so, um, really kind of you know, shifted the overall market's opinion of these companies. So you look at companies like Micron, NVIDIA, Intel, AMD, all these companies kind of pointed to weak guidance for the rest of 2019. And, you know, in 2018, when that was pretty much expected to happen, a lot of people become, became very negative on the space. And a lot of people thought that, okay, we're heading for a recession because all these semiconductor companies are, you know, expecting extremely weak growth. And so they wanted to pull their money out. And now, due to, you know, whether it be analysts or, you know, slightly, you know, more positive viewpoints from the companies than people are expecting. A lot of people are dumping their money back into these semiconductors, uh, in my opinion, because they're going, they don't want to miss out on the next big upswing that we had, say, in 2016, 2017, that, you know, led to monumental gains in all these semiconductors. Now, my personal opinion uh, for all of this is that nothing has really changed. All that's really changed is the market's perception. And you as an investor who has already been looking at that long term, you know, time horizon is kind of dumbfounded with why the heck did the stock price move so quickly, you know, with realistically no tangible news coming out of the companies. Now, I'm going to kind of wrap that all up into that. The market is essentially now having the opinion that investors that were really closely following these companies, such as myself, had, you know, going in to 2019. You know, before 2019 happened, we knew that there was going to be a slowdown. We talked about it here on the channel. We knew that these companies are, you know, kind of really due to a lot of, you know, uh, global factors and a lot of uh, factors doing with how the semiconductors are interrelated to one another. A lot of people kind of now shifted with, oh my God, everything's falling apart to wait. This could just be a speed bump and all these companies are drastically undervalued. Uh, I need to put my money back in. Now, personally, uh, this worries me because this means that, you know, that kind of edge, I'll say, you know, from having someone that closely follows companies, closely works with their products and, you know, really focuses on these companies and doesn't really try to pay attention to what the overall market, you know, what, what the overall market's viewpoint is in these companies. The fact that the market's tune is starting to kind of gear towards that without any of the, you know, the, the fundamental uh, groundbreaking shifts, you know, between like say, hey, Micron's actually starting to sell, you know, a you know, record high amount of uh, DRAM or you know, Intel pumping out more uh, CPUs than expected and being their, their extremely weak revenue guidance. You know, the fact that all this is getting kind of you know, thought about in the marketplace and really getting priced into these companies without it coming to fruition worries me. And I think it does worry a lot of you here in this community because a lot of you have been kind of looking at the numbers and looking what the CEO says. And, you know, it doesn't seem like it's amazing, but the stock price keeps going up. And I completely agree with you. I think too many people are just assuming that, okay, this is just another, uh, you know, 2014, 2015 issue with China. China hit a recession and that all these, you know, tech companies kind of took a major downfall because of it. But then it quickly rebounded and all these companies went up, you know, two, three X in, you know, just a year. So I think a lot of people assume that history is going to repeat itself in such a short amount of time. And I think that that's something that all of us really need to pay attention to when we look at these companies. You can take the company Micron. So Micron, uh, you know, they missed earnings. They kind of forecasted lower. They cut cap capital expenditure because they expected that while the growth will return, it's not going to return as quickly as they once anticipated. So they, you know, are reacting accordingly. And I definitely think that Micron... Uh, you know, as far as their management's going with Sanjay being their CEO and kind of leading them through all this, you know, he's been in the semiconductor space, particularly in the DRAM space for, you know, 40 years right now. I think he understands 
significantly more than the average investor and than the average analyst out there about you know kind of how these trends play out. And so I do believe that he is still leading the company in the proper direction. And when you look at Micron's balance sheet now compared to what they were, you know, say in 2013, 2014, when the stock price hit below 10, they don't have to worry about, you know, everything falling apart and the company facing bankruptcy once things start to slow down. So that's something that you definitely, you know, can't take away from management. But I think too many investors are just automatically assuming and hedge fund managers especially are just automatically assuming, okay, the worst is behind us, dump all your money in here so we get an amazing return over the next couple of quarters. You can look at a company like Intel that, you know, on one of the positions I bought in, I'm up almost 30% on it, and Intel is a relatively slow growing company. Uh, so, you know, getting 30% in just a couple of months off of a very, say, mature company is Im very impressive to say the least, but impressive via, you know, a very interesting shift in market dynamics and also the market opinion on you know, the overall economy. A lot of people are becoming extremely more optimistic than they were about a year ago with the China trade war. A lot of people are expecting that the China trade war is gonna kind of dissipate after this month. I personally do not think that the trade war is going to kind of subside you know, this quickly into kind of you know, wrapping up. I think that you know, the most strategic thing to do from uh, President Trump's perspective is that he wants to you know, lead this on a good note, but not completely you know, end things so that way he is more likely to get reelected in 2020. I definitely think that that has something to do with this. I think that, you know, President Trump brought up a lot of points that say, hey, China is pretty much stealing money from us. When we do X, Y, and Z, we have a horrible deal. Uh, we need to correct that. And then you saw the massive implications of that across the entire market. And I think that a lot of people are just expecting that, okay, his back's up against a wall, uh, you know, because of how poorly the economy is performing. He needs to, you know, kind of wrap it up and let the economy go you know, to all time highs again if he expects to get reelected. And I don't think that that is, I don't think that from say like, a, like an administrative perspective that would make most sense. I think that would make most sense is that, okay, you start to make things look better, but you don't want them to be fully over before you know, the next election comes around. Otherwise, you know, that, that's, that's a bullet out of their holster. They no longer have that leg like, weight, uh, that leg like, leverage. They'd be like, well, I've been navigating this China-U.S. Uh, trade talk so well, you know, elect me president again. Now, that is a little bit like, you know, a tinfoil hat type of uh, perception of what's going on here. But I do think that that actually weighs a little bit as to how this is going to be, uh, you know, wrapping up over the next couple of months. The China talks need to, you know, go well. That is essentially what all investors are saying is that it needs to go well. Otherwise, the market will go into free fall. So odds are it's going to go well because no one wants to be the one that cripples the entire economy. So I think a lot of people are just immediately pricing that in. As you can see, companies like, um, like for example, like Alibaba, uh, you know, they have had an amazing rebound. And these companies definitely, you know, I, I don't think that the, that the sell-off was justified. These companies were doing well. Uh, you know, there was margin slowdown. There was a lot of uh, pressure put on these companies from the trade war talks and everything going on. And I think a lot of people were just selling off Chinese companies because they had no idea what was going to happen. And I think that that kind of signifies that how much, you know, optimism is now getting pushed back into emerging markets. And the reason why I'm talking about that is because it directly affects, you know, companies like Micron and Intel and other semiconductors that are getting 60 plus percent of their revenue out of these Chinese companies. Because if the Chinese economy isn't, you know, in full growth mode, a lot of these companies are gonna lose a lot of money because no one's gonna be buying their products. And so I think that that is essentially what's happening. I think that the semiconductor space is essentially becoming a, you know, an indirect plague on the China trade talk, you know, going smoothly. I don't think that any of these companies are signaling like, okay, yeah, massive buying ahead, you know, we're gonna be, you know, creating a lot of money for all of our investors. I really do not think that that's the case. Now, the thing that matters, <laughs> um, you know, do I think that this actually, you know, has ground and do I think that this will actually, you know, hold on and will we hit new time highs? Is Micron going 100, things like that. Everything that's said right here is pretty much an extrapolation of what type of, you know, speculative players are in the market uh, you know, and my speculation based off that. So this is extremely, you know, convoluted and, you know, requires X amount of variables to go the exact way. I do think that we have two things that is going to happen. You have the trade war is going to, you know, go south. And I think that we are essentially going to price in another either correction or recession or bear market, whatever you want to call it, into the market. I do think that between the Fed holding off for now, people are pretty much hoping and, and banking on that China and the US are gonna be on good terms again. And then once you know the Fed starts raising rates again, 
as I imagine they will kind of have to do, you know, in the next couple of years. Uh, if if that doesn't happen and say things go south with China and then the and then the Fed starts to raise rates again, I think that you can pretty much guarantee that there will be an economic collapse because of that. Uh, you know, you have the two largest uh, GDPs in the world not cooperating with one another, and then you have a less business and less uh, you know pro economic friendly environment with rates starting to go up from where they've been at for the past couple of uh, you know pretty much a decade. Uh, you know, I definitely think that everything is signaling that it needs to happen. Now, what that means for the individual investment play <laughs> is that I think that these companies will, up to the trade agreement, will probably continue to rally. And I think that if trade talks go well, I think these companies will continue to rally. And I could definitely see them hitting all hitting new all-time highs just due to, you know, what people are pricing in. Whether or not that is justified is up to you. I personally do not think that, you know, all these companies hitting new all-time highs based off of what people are expecting to happen is justifiable. I think that what I would rather see is that all these companies hitting all-time highs because their business performance is hitting all-time highs. I think that a lot of the tech plays that are so focused on China have become so much of a spec play that regardless of what's going on with the underlying business, people are just pricing it to perfection. And, and that worries me. Um, I've actually been thinking pretty in-depthly over the past couple of weeks of whether or not I want to really significantly cut down my semiconductor companies. Uh, you know, you guys know that I started buying into semiconductors, expecting there to be a massive drawdown in all of their prices, so that way I could really take advantage of a massive, uh, you know, movement up whenever we start to come out of the next recession, not before the next recession. I wasn't expecting these monumental moves now. I was expecting to really, you know, have these, you know, positions go negative. If I expected these companies to be going up, you know, 50 plus percent, from the last time I bought them, I would have made significantly larger bets on these companies going up and, you know, really invested in like, if I could expect that Micron's worth time was going to be over, uh, you know, in this first half of 2019, I would have been loading up Micron shares and made it by far the biggest position in my portfolio. You know, you have companies like Micron that, you know, have been so volatile <laughs> recently over the past couple of years. Um, you know, trading at, you know, just a year ago at $65 a share, went all the way down to 28 and I was just kind of sitting around 40 Right now, I think that as asymmetric risk reward that we had when, say, we bought in at, you know, book value and that there was no real reason why the company would continue to drop, I think that that is gone. And I think that the higher this stock goes, the more risk you're adding on to yourself because it's not that the business is changing monumentally, it's just that the price is changing. Uh, the second that a company starts to, like my philosophy that of reason why I'm buying into a company, the second that that starts to like, you know, show up in analysts reporting and starts to be kind of the tune of the market is generally when I like to get out because that generally means that, you know, that tide is quickly gonna go back to the way it was, uh, you know, prior to my investment. So. I'm getting a little nervous here. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section down below. Now that this was a bit more of an abstract analytical viewpoint of it, if you guys want me to go more into the numbers, I can. Uh, this is just, you know, kind of what I've been looking at and analyzing over the past couple of months. And it, it doesn't make full sense to me unless there is a significant amount of speculation being brought back into the market in this space. So that is just kind of my overall opinion of it. When did uh, intro back? So thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys got some use out of this. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.